Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Rewind That. It's your girl, Miss K. If this is your first time coming across my channel, welcome. Please be sure to subscribe if you like the vibe and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more videos like this one. All right, guys, today I'm coming to you with a new show called Bel Air. I'm pretty sure that a lot of you have heard of it. And it is the reboot of The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. But this reboot is different, guys. All right. So anyway, I'm going to do a recap of season one, episode one. And then for episode number two and three, I'm going to do a review. All right. So, guys, I started watching this show on Sunday night and I finished the latest episode, which is episode three last night and guys i'm here to tell you that i'm already hooked okay first let me start by saying that although this is a reboot it's not your average reboot because unlike the fresh prince of bel-air bel-air is a drama based series okay not comedy so let's talk about our beloved will smith character played by jabari banks so this kid is from West Philly and he's a star athlete and a promising D1 prospect, okay? He's been scouted already, guys. So everybody loves Will. He's a popular, charming guy and pretty much everyone knows about his skills and ball. But one kid, Darnell, challenges Will to some street ball where he's sure Will can't hold him. And instead of ignoring this kid, Will shows up to the court because Darnell told him he wouldn't be man enough to show up. And this is exactly why you got to ignore people like this, guys, okay? Those haters that want to stop you from shining and being the star that you are. Anyway, like I said, Will shows up with his friend Trey, but Trey brings a gun along for protection, which later proves to be a big mistake, all right? So before they start to play the game, this hustler named Rashad has Will place a bet. He tells Will that if he loses, he has to come work for him. But if he wins, he'll give Will two Gs. So Will and Trey play against Darnell and another player. And Will and Trey win the game, right? And the bet. So Rashad was actually willing to pay them guys. Like he wasn't tricking them or anything. And he wasn't about to go back on his word. But Darnell was a sore loser. And he takes the basketball and throws it at Will. But it hits Rashad in the head instead, okay? And Rashad didn't see this coming because he was counting the money to pay Will and Trey. But now Rashad wants to know who threw the ball and he blamed Trey pretty much like, was it you? Right? And Will says to Rashad that Trey didn't throw the ball, so he needs to chill out. But Rashad doesn't like anybody talking to him like that. So the situation escalates and long story short, guys, Will punches Rashad in the face and Trey gets involved and... He gets jumped and it becomes an all-out brawl. So in order to get the crowd to disperse and get the guys to stop jumping Trey, Will gets Trey's gun and fires off a few shots in the air. But he also makes the mistake of pointing the gun at Rashad. And Rashad says, you better use it or I'm going to smoke you dumb behind, okay? Anyway, the cops come and arrest Will and Rashad. But after a while, Will is released. And Rashad assumes that Will snitched because he was let go without even seeing the judge. He tells Will to watch his back because he's got eyes everywhere. Anyway, guys, so Will's mom, she picks him up. And she's so freaking scared for Will's life that she doesn't even take him home, all right? She already had him a flight booked to L.A. and was taking him straight to the airport. She ain't even pack his things, honey, okay? I mean, he did have like a book bag of some things or whatever, right? But anyway... Will's mom tells him that his Uncle Phil made a few calls to get him out of jail. And he is now moving with his auntie and uncle in Bel-Air, right? <laughs> so when he gets to Bel-Air, he has an Uber driver who happens to be Jazz, guys, okay? And I like how Jazz also had the dice swinging from the rearview mirror. Anyway, let's move on to the Banks family, who is nothing like the original Banks guys from Fresh Prince. Even Jeffrey is different, okay? He's not a butler, but a house manager. And guys, Jeffrey is a G, okay? On top of that, he's also like an advisor to Uncle Phil. All right, so speaking of Uncle Phil, he's a chocolate, clean-cut, bald brother, okay? And he is currently in a campaign in which he's running for district attorney. But he's not doing so well with the black boat, guys, which we will find out, I think, in episode two or three. But anyway... We'll talk about that later. Okay, so moving on to the lady of the house. Aunt Viv is gorgeous as ever, guys, and she's definitely concerned and sensitive to Will's situation, all right? And she goes to bat for Will when Uncle Phil was questioning if it's really a good idea for Will to stay with them, all right? And once again, more on that later. Now, let's get to Hillary, guys, who's played by Coco Jones. And if you guys haven't noticed already, 
this cast is gorgeous okay i'm talking about this beautiful chocolate skin everywhere honey everybody is chocolate except for ashley so anyway hillary is nothing like hillary from the sitcom she's not an airheaded valley girl instead she's a culinary artist who aspires to be world renowned and she has a pretty good following on social media too okay now let's get to carlton who is just not Carlton from the sitcom, okay, guys? <laughs> this version of Carlton is popular at school, pretty much runs Bel Air Academy, and is the star athlete on the lacrosse team. And guys, guess what? He's a freaking drug addict, all right? That's right, he snorts Xanax. Anyway, guys, in this episode, it's all about Will adjusting to the family and vice versa, okay? And when he arrives, there's a campaign party already going on at the house. So Hillary takes Will to Carlton's room to get changed into something more suitable for the party. So once Will joins the party, he wants to find Uncle Phil so he could thank him, but he says a little too much in front of Phil's important guest, okay? And Jeffrey peeps this from afar and comes over and removes Will before he says too much and ruins an endorsement or something like that for Uncle Phil, okay? Anyway, later on, Uncle Phil tells Will, that he needs to tell people that he came to Bel Air for a better education and nothing more than that, okay? So forget telling people the real story, all right? But right after that, guys, Trey calls Will in a panic and he tells him that he needs to get back to Philly to clear things up with Rashad because Rashad thinks that Will snitched and he wants to kill them both. So Will tries to escape the mansion and he tells Jazz to drive him to the airport. But Uncle Phil and Jeffrey come out and stop them and... Uncle Phil makes Will come back in the house. And my thing with this scene, too, was like, um, okay, Will, where was you getting the money to get yourself a flight? <laughs> anyway, so when they get back in the house, Uncle Phil tells Will to give this arrangement a chance, okay? Make the most out of the second chance that he's been given. And he also promises that Will will have every opportunity to create the future that he wants, okay? So they shake on it, and it's a deal. So the next day, Uncle Phil tells Carlton to take Will to his friend Connor's beach party. But before that, Carlton also brings Will to practice with him, which is at the school, so that Will can get acquainted with some kids there and also the school, right? But in the locker room, Will hears Carlton and his white friends listening to Bobby Smurda, and they're dropping the N-word like crazy, guys, okay? Very freely. And Carlton does not care. He's in the middle doing the shmoney dance. Like, he's he's with it, you know? <laughs> so Will stops them, and he tells Connor and the rest of the guys that they don't get to say nigga. But Connor challenges Will, and he asks him what he's going to do about it. And Will was ready to show him, all right? But Carlton, he came between them, right? So long story short, when they get back home, Carlton tells Will that he's already pulling the race card, but... Will tells Carlton that Connor shouldn't be able to use that word because he ain't with the culture. But Carlton doesn't see it that way, all right? As far as he's concerned, it's just a word. And these white kids like Connor, they pay money to hear these rappers curse and say the N-word. And it's going to be expected for them to sing along with the lyrics, right? This is what Carlton says. So... Will shakes his head and he tells Carlton that he's just a straight clown, okay? So this causes friction between Will and Carlton already and Aunt Viv tells Will that he has to make things work with Carlton in order to gain her and Uncle Phil's trust. And with trust comes other privileges, okay? So Will goes to tell Carlton that they need to make nice if he doesn't want Will following him around. So Carlton agrees and they go to Connor's party later that night, right? So once they get to the party, everything is going fine. But while Carlton is snorting his drugs with his friends, Will is somewhere off hitting it off with a girl named Lisa, who happens to be Carlton's ex-girlfriend. Now, even though Will is now aware of this, he wasn't aware of it earlier, but Lisa told him she's Carlton's ex, okay? And him and Lisa, they still enjoyed each other's company anyway, and they start kissing in plain sight, which is by the pool. And Carlton sees this and he gets so angry and rushes over and pushes Will into the pool. And this is really bad, guys, because Will can't swim. So he's pretty much drowning at this point, right? So Lisa, who is on the swim team, she jumps in to pull him out of the water. And as she continues to show her concern for Will, Carlton tells her that it's not that serious and Will is just doing this for attention. So after Will catches his breath, he stands up with an angry look on his face and he starts walking toward Carlton. But Connor steps in and says, yo, chill out, bro. So Will punched him in the face, which was well-deserved, okay? 
Then he comes face to face with Carlton and they have a little stare down right before Will attacks him and knocks him out. Okay. And that is how the episode ended guys. And this was a great pilot. Okay. Very interesting for me. And I loved how they had the Philly culture in the beginning of the episode. Okay. They was repping Philly hard. Okay. With the music, the lingo and all. So I'm pretty sure that the Philly heads was loving that. Okay. But that was the recap for episode one of Bel Air, guys. As I said, this is not your ordinary reboot, okay? It's a dramatic version of Will and the Banks family, okay? And it's more like the dramatic Fresh Prince of Bel Air meets All American, mixed with a little insecure, you know what I'm saying? And I say insecure for the music part of it, right? In that LA vibe. And nothing more than that, okay? But... I also love Will and his mother's relationship. I love how she encourages him. And I think that as a single mother, she really did the best that she could do. She's raising a talented, charismatic young man. But unfortunately, he really has some cockiness about him and some pride, right? And this is the reason why he's in the situation that he's in because he has pride. All right. But anyway, guys, I also love when his mother says to him, your crown is waiting as soon as you have the courage to wear it. I thought that was so dope. She just has this special poetic way of encouraging and talking to her son, you know. Anyway, guys, that was the episode. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more videos like this one. Until next time, you guys take care and be blessed. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.